octahedron mobile is intended for use with newborn babies from roughly five to eight weeks of age because it is at this stage of life that their color vision truly begins developing. The three octahedrons on this mobile purposefully only include the three bold primary colors. This is to help stimulate the infant's visual cortex and aid them in beginning to distinguish between the colors. The octahedrons are made from highly reflective paper that helps to emphasize the three-dimensional shapes as they shine in the light. This helps the baby's brain to begin distinguishing between 2D and 3D objects and also lays a foundation for future understanding of geometric proportions and patterns. The octahedron mobile is simple, beautiful, and attractive in its own right, and babies are typically entranced by them. The materials you will need to make the octahedron mobile include a glue gun, a can of spray adhesive, a sharp pair of scissors, a standard metric ruler, a wooden dowel cut to 18 inches in length, a pencil, three paper clips, a key ring for hanging the mobile, a roll of clear nylon string, one sheet each of 250 GSM or thinner foil cardstock in red, blue, and yellow, and three paper copies of the octahedron template, which can be printed for free from my blog post, which is linked in the description box below. First, you'll need to coat the back of each paper template with a layer of spray adhesive. Then you'll attach one to the back or the white side of each of the foil cardstock sheets. While the adhesive is drying, line up your wooden dowel with the ruler and use a pencil to make a small mark at 4 inches, 9 inches, and 14 inches in from the end of the dowel. These will later become the points at which the octahedrons will hang. Next, cut three lengths of nylon string, each of them about 18 inches long. This will provide some extra slack in your string that can be trimmed later when the octahedrons are tied to the dowel. Next, you'll tie each of the strings to one end of a paper clip. Make sure to pull the string very tightly so the knot remains secure. Then you can just trim off the little bit of excess string. Once your octahedron templates are dry, you can begin cutting them out. Do your best to cut along the outermost edges of the thick black lines so that the octahedron folds as evenly as possible. Instead of cutting along the whole edge in one go like you normally would, it's better to cut off big chunks of cardstock as you go so that you can get to the small corners evenly and straight on. This also decreases the risk of damaging the foil on the other side with your scissors. Definitely take your time and go nice and slow as you cut to ensure that you have the most even edges possible. This will be crucial for the final octahedron to fold properly. Once you have your three octahedrons cut out, it's time to start folding them. As you fold, you will do so along the dotted lines first and save the flaps for last. You want to fold inward on the paper side as opposed to outward on the foil side because the foil side has a tendency to get very crinkled up if you fold in that direction. Since you can't actually see the dotted lines as you're folding, a little trick you can use is to line up the edge of the flap that you're folding with one of the other lines along the triangles, and that will keep your fold nice and straight. It's okay if there's a little bit of creasing on the paper on the inside because you won't see it on the outside. The middle line doesn't really have anything to line it up with, so instead you can use your fingernail to make little indents along the line so that you have a guide when you finally fold it over. Now you have a little guideline to use and you can easily fold it in half evenly. The next step is to fold the small outer flaps. You'll have to use the same fingernail technique when folding each one since there isn't anything to line it up with. It's okay if the flap gets a little wrinkled as you do this because it will be glued inside the octahedron and won't be visible. Once your guideline is established, then you can fold it over and make the crease nice and defined. Once you have all three octahedrons folded and ready, the next step is to assemble them and glue them shut. You'll put a line of hot glue along the edges of the flaps first. The easiest place to start is along the top triangle that only has one flap and work your way around the octahedron. You'll want to end up with these two flaps left at the end, which you can put glue on and just press it down. As you glue each flap, make sure you press and hold it for a second as the glue cools, not just on the outside, but also on the inside to help keep it nice and flat. You want the edges matched up as closely as possible so that you end up with a nice clean edge. Before you put glue on the last two flaps and press down to close it, you need to get one of the paper clips with string that you made earlier and put it inside the octahedron. Wedge the string in between the two flaps so that it is exiting the topmost point of the octahedron and the paper clip is stuck inside so that the string doesn't pull through. Once this is done, you can apply glue to the last two flaps and close the octahedron. If any glue seeps out, you can simply wipe it off before it dries. And now you have your first octahedron ready to hang. Next, glue and secure a paperclip string to the other two octahedrons. Now it's time to hang them from the wooden dowel. 
When we hang the octahedrons, we will be hanging the yellow one in the center slightly higher than the red and blue ones. The red and blue octahedrons will be hung 10 inches below the dowel. You may need to make small adjustments at the knot point to get it exact. You will also want to make sure you are tying it at the first mark you made on the dowel at the four inch point. Once you have the string measured correctly and in the right spot, double knot it and pull it tightly to secure it in place. The middle yellow octahedron will be hung seven inches below the dowel. Ensure that it is tied at the middle mark on the dowel at the nine inch point. The final red octahedron will be hung 10 inches below the dowel, the same as the blue one. Once you have all three octahedrons hung from their attachment points, double check that the knots are as tight as possible and then trim the excess string. The final step is to attach two even pieces of string to either side of the keyring and then to the ends of the dowel so that the keyring is suspended exactly above the middle point of the dowel. To do this, first you'll cut two long pieces of string about 18 inches in length. Next, you'll need to tie each string on either side of the keyring so that it is 9 inches in length between the two attachment points. Because the nylon string has a tendency to slide a bit, to maintain the balance of the mobile, each string should be secured in place on the dowel at half an inch in from the ends, either using a small dab of hot glue, or if you have access to a small hacksaw, you can simply create a small notch to hold the string. You can also add a dab of hot glue on top of each string's attachment point on the keyring in order to avoid movement of the strings. After everything is secure, you can trim any excess string that might be remaining on the keyring or dowel. When the mobile is totally complete, this is what it should look like. Choose a hanging location that receives a good amount of natural light. As a newborn's vision is still developing, you'll want to suspend the mobile so that the bottom of the octahedrons hangs approximately 12 to 15 inches above the baby's face and line of sight when they are lying beneath it. 